Welcome to another edition of Fourth and Pain, the only football and pro wrestling show to be hosted by an NFL player and a weight loss champion. That right there, Redskins defensive end, Adam Kerker. I don't care what we have to do to win the game this Sunday. You lie, you cheat, you steal. You lie, you cheat, you steal, and use a steel chair if you have to. Character Guerrero there, former wrestling announcer, weight loss champion, and the fourth amigo, Chuck Carroll here. Be sure to follow the show at Fourth and Pain, where we tweet out new shows each and every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern. But another NFL Sunday is upon us. And with that, Adam, it is time to start things off with a little foosball. The Redskins, oh, and two tough Tough loss last week in Green Bay, looking ahead this week to a difficult matchup against Calvin Johnson, Matthew Stafford, the Detroit Lions. We're going to talk about that, give our four keys to the game in a little bit. Also, coming up at the end of the show, going to be joined by your teammates. Very excited about this. Roy Hallou, Will Compton, former Nebraska Cornhusker. Talk such about as that yourself. Nebraska controversy how, this week. How about that? Ending the show with a bang. Be huge. Stick around. You're not going to want to miss that. Uh, but let's start things off with Robert Griffin the third and his knee. Pierre Garçon, wide receiver, former fourth and pain champion and fan of pro wrestling, comes out this week and says basically Robert's knee brace is a hindrance. It's slowing him down. Uh, the first two games kind of like the preseason for him. I mean, just can we stop talking about the damn knee at this point? I, I think we're all in two. People aren't happy with the way Robert's playing. The knee is the fallback point. Here's my take on the brace. I, I, I'll just tell you what happened to me in college. My sophomore year at Nebraska, Bill Callahan became our head coach. Now, almost every university makes offensive linemen wear knee braces to protect their knees. They don't have to move that much, so it doesn't really bother them. They made all of us defensive linemen wear knee braces throughout spring practice. I didn't like it. It constantly moved. It rubbed. It, it hindered me. I felt like I was a little bit slower out there. And after our last spring practice before the spring game, our D-line coach, I'm talking to him, and I go, do we have to wear knee braces on Saturday now for the spring game? Now, I don't know what my facial reaction was, but he just looked like, character. are you okay? Are you going to cry? Like, is it really that bad? We never wore knee braces again as a defensive hmm. line. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm not Robert Griffin III. I can't tell you how that knee brace is affecting him. I can only speak from my personal experience, and that's what I felt. I was happy when they took it off of me. Now, I weigh 300 pounds. Robert weighs about 210, 213. So it might be a lot different for him. That knee brace probably a lot lighter. My take for Robert is simply this. If you feel like that knee brace is slowing you down, you need to take it off. If you feel like the knee, it protects your knee and it keeps it safe so you don't have to worry about it, you leave it on. I think there's a lot of, it, it's up to Robert. Only he can tell you what, what he feels. I just told you my personal story. I think he's getting a lot of uh, his family, a lot of people want him to wear that brace. So I think he's getting some of that as well. And I, if he's comfortable with it, then he's comfortable with it. Yeah, but I don't think that he is comfortable with it. You can go just the back way he looks, to watch, you just yeah, that? Well, watching last week's game in particular in Green Bay, you see him kind of pounding on it, tugging at it, trying to well, pull it up, a dirt getting the dirt. Get up. Yeah. Well, that can't be comfortable. That's not going to happen if that brace isn't there. At one point, they had to go into the locker room, a trainer did, come back out and give him another brace to wear. And so if you're constantly adjusting that thing and it isn't comfortable for you, it's an irritant, yeah, that's going to be somewhat of a hindrance. Whether or not that's actually hindering his speed that's up for another debate because of course he comes out and he challenges pierre in rg3 fashion then to a race saying hey i'm still the faster you of the got two. In that race uh i'm taking rg3 man i mean this Me guy too. could have been an no olympian pierre, pierre is a Robert. good man uh Track but star. exactly he could have been an olympian sprinter for god's sakes but you know what uh i say brace no brace he's still the fastest man on the team except for me yeah, right. That's ridiculous. Uh, Detroit Lions come into town, my man. Four keys to the game from fourth and pain. Huge one. Redskins one-point favorites. Uh, just two games, three games now into the season. This is pretty much a must-win. Give me key number one, sir. Well, I'll give you a little background on the Lions. They're middle of the road in defense right now. They got that front forward, Nick Fairley and Dominic Kinsu, that they can create havoc. Uh, they're ranked 15th in defense. They're owning the time of possession right now by five minutes more than their opposition. The, they're seventh in passing. So to me, and uh, Matthew Stanford, if, Stafford, if I could talk, 
has only been sacked once so far this season. The offensive line has been protecting him well. That offense has been balanced. We have seven sacks in two games, four in the last game against Aaron Rodgers. Ryan Kerrigan has three. Rack has one. We have two of the best outside pass rushers in the game. Continue to do something we've done very well. There's all this negativity. Keep getting pressure on quarterbacks and knocking them on their butts and getting sacks. Keep doing that. Mm. Can't argue with that. I, I mean, Kerrigan has just been playing out of his mind, which is beast. Uh, you know, shoot. If that's Mini not a, if that's not a key to a game for you, I don't know what is. I agree. What's your keys? Uh, key number one for me. I mean, here's <laughs> your former teammate. You got to keep Indicon Sue. And Domican Sue. Wow, I know, that. man. I just always butcher that name. He's going to kick my ass. You got to keep Sue away. House of away. Spears, by the way. Sorry. Go you ahead. have to keep him away from Robert Griffin the third. This is the last guy you want around a quarterback who's wearing a knee brace. That's a target, not just for any D lineman, but good Lord, we're talking about Sue here. Keep him away from Robert Griffin the third. That is tip number one. Key to the game number one for me. Give me yours. Make a field goal. We're 0-2. Okay. I don't care if it's Potter. I don't care if it's Kai Forbath. Kai showed last year. What did he make? 23 in a row? Something, Something like, like that. that. He set yeah. a record. Make a field goal, please. Uh, key number three. Well, Sl- that was number three. This is four now. All right. Sl- it's your media guy. You can't well, Whatever. Slow Calvin Johnson. You have to eliminate the mega threat of Megatron. This is going to be huge. The Redskins, so vulnerable on big plays so far this year. This is a guy that you really need to cover down, double, triple, whatever it takes. Get him out of the game. You can't be productive. You're going to continue to give up those gobs and gobs of yards if you're not very, very careful against Stafford and Megatron. I completely agree. He, he single-season receiving record broke Jerry Rice's record last year. Obviously, Stafford threw for over 5,000 yards, got a big contract this year. Contain, contain Stafford, contain Calvin Johnson, and get pressure on him. You're listening to Fourth and Pain with Redskins defensive end Adam Carricker and Chuck Carroll. Uh, let's have a little bit of fun here in about two and a half minutes. Huge trade sent shockwaves around the NFL this week. Trent Richardson traded from the Cleveland Browns to the Indianapolis Colts for a 2014 shocker first, first round. I couldn't believe this. I mean, we were sitting here and when you show this to me, they drafted him third overall a year ago, and he broke. One of Jim Brown's rushing records, possibly the greatest running back in the history of the NFL, and they traded him for a first-round pick. This first-round pick could be the 32nd pick, the first pick. They don't know. This was a shocker to me. I know what it's like to be traded on a whim, but that was after I'd been in St. Louis three years. This is a shocker. I really don't see them getting a three overall for this. This is amazing to me. Uh, so here's, They know what they're doing, but amazing. He, here's my question. I mean, would this be the equivalent of the Redskins trading Robert Griffin the third to recoup Ooh. those three first-rounders and the second that they gave up to the Rams in order to get that draft pick Ooh. and select him? I so, mean, is it that big? So if a team offered us three first-round picks in a second for Robert, you, are you saying should, do should it? Should you take it? Should you take it? Is is this trade on par with that? Well, I, I don't. I The shock value surpasses that because of, of Robert. What I, I wouldn't do the trade. I mean, Robert showed last year he's going to get better and better this year. He showed what he could do last year. He was number 15 in the NFL's top 100. You, 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 no, you don't do it. Shock value would surpass even this, which is amazingly shocking. I would liken it to Alfred Morris. Now, Trent Richardson was number three overall. Alfred Morris was a six-round pick. But Alfred is a single-season Redskins rushing uh, holder, and he also was second in the NFL in, in, in rushing last year behind Adrian Peterson. His stats, as good as Trent Richardson was, his stats were better. So to me, those stats put him ahead of Trent. His draft status, I guess, drops him behind, so you call it a wash. So to me, it'd be like trading Alfred Morris. Right, and everybody wants to focus in, speaking of Morris, on his two fumbles this year, but one of them came on a bad pitch. The other one, it's one of those things that happens. People say, well, he's not the same rusher this year as he was last, but then you take a closer look. Well, the Redskins have built behind, so they haven't had the opportunity to run the ball nearly as much as they would like to. He's actually averaging 6.1 yards per carry this season. Season. More last, last year, year. Yep. he averaged yep. 4.8 he's doing better as a sophomore than he did at a rookie you just haven't seen nearly as much of them and i guarantee you this the redskins two things they would be fools to trade him but they would sure as hell get more than a sixth round draft pick for him i think it would be the equivalent of this trent richardson trade to trading alfin morris for a first round pick all right this here is fourth and pain stick around coming up in a couple of segments your teammates and former corn huskers roy halu will compton going to be weighing in on the bo pelini scandal but right now this is fourth and pain don't you go anywhere 